There's been a whole lot of hullabaloo about the new Beatles song, Now and Then. The reaction floodgates have opened, and countless people are now crying in front of their cameras, hoping to ride that sweet algorithm wave. But those types of Jedi mind tricks don't work on the weak-minded here at Flying Pig Music, so I'm here to answer a simple question. Is it any good? The answer is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is, I guess. I'm not going to bore you with the history of this track. For that, I'll simply refer you to the Beatles' own YouTube channel, and watch the short 12-minute film on its history. Now, let's get on with talking about the actual song. I'll be honest. Upon my first listen, first thing that crossed my mind was, yeah, okay, that was alright. I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't listen to John's original demo, so I went in completely blind. First thing that stood out was the modern-sounding production. It all sounds ultra-polished, including John's vocal, which comes through crystal clear as if it was recorded yesterday. The drums, bass, and piano also sound very current day. Is that a good thing? Bad thing? I'm still not sure. It's up to you, the listener, to decide for yourself. What it does tell me, however, is that Paul and Ringo aren't trying to pretend that this song is something that it isn't. It is not a 60s peak Beatles song, so they aren't trying to elevate this song to compete with their best works. That would be futile, and I think fans would immediately call it out, and it would absolutely work to its detriment. As far as negative criticisms, I really don't have any. Really. Even my stone-cold, cynical heart can't muster up anything that really stands out that bothers me. Like I said, I wasn't expecting much, and the first listen kind of gave me a that-was-okay kind of reaction. I put now and then on repeat after that and started immersing myself in it. That's when I realized something curious. I started really liking this song. After a few more listens, I started singing along and humming the guitar solo, and a lump started forming in my throat. And I got a sudden attack of allergies in my eyes. That was weird. It suddenly hit me. Everything that makes a great Beatles song is right here in Now and Then. All the ingredients of the Beatles formula are present and accounted for, and it's pretty freaking great. No, it won't rival Strawberry Fields Forever, Hey Jude, A Day in the Life, Let It Be, or I Want to Hold Your Hand. But it doesn't have to. The Beatles don't have to prove anything to anyone anymore. This honestly simply feels like a final thank you letter to all Beatles fans, young and old. And for that alone, I'm grateful to Paul and Ringo for finally finishing this song and releasing it. Another thing I'd like to point out is the trailblazing AI technology used here. Without getting too technical, machine learning was used to clean up the subpar recording that John Lennon used with his home cassette recorder back in 1979. It sounds absolutely stunning. Regardless of how someone feels subjectively about the Beatles' music, one thing is an inarguable fact. The Beatles were trailblazers and pioneers. Not just with their music, but in the technology that they had at their disposal and how they used it. From the earliest examples of guitar feedback, to tape loops, to multi-track recorders, the Beatles paved the way and other bands followed. I can pretty much guarantee that with the success of Now and Then, other bands and artists will now use AI to isolate and clarify vocals and instrumentation from recordings long thought to be obsolete. You just wait and see. In conclusion, Now and Then is a most welcome surprise to me, a complete joy to listen to, and a charming, loving, final goodbye from the greatest band to ever have existed. <laughs>